Beyond the nuclear program, though, the United States carries a long list of issues about Iran to the General Assembly session, key among them Iran's relationship with Syria, its sponsorship of Hezbollah, and its detention of two Americans with questions about the fate of a third. One of them is a U.S. combat veteran, a Marine from Flint, Michigan. America Tonight's Sheila McVicker traveled there to meet his family. December 18, 2011, Iranian state television. My name is Amir Mirzai Hikmati. Amir Hekmati, born in 1983 in Flagstaff, Arizona, to Iranian-American parents, Benaz and Ali, one of four children in a close and active family, high school hockey star, an American combat veteran. As a U.S. Marine sergeant, he served tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, I sure was proud of him, you know, for wanting to serve his country. Post-Iraq, using his language skills, working as a defense contractor with a sideline in real estate. And then, in December 2011, Tehran, accused as an American spy, an agent for the CIA, making this public confession. And I will also go out and do conduct interviews. Back home in Flint, Michigan. The first time, it was the news. It was his face in the uh, TV. It was the first time in months that the family knew where Amir was. What did you think as you heard Amir speak in that confession video? I was shocked because I was just looking at his face. That wasn't, that wasn't him. I said, my God, what did they do to him? He take care of his health and he was you know, very fit. And in the picture, he was tiny, yellow, white, sick, looked sick. His face shows everything. His face shows that he was in under pressure and danger, yes. Amir Hekmati's journey to Tehran and those accusations began with a desire to see his aging grandmothers. That's her grandma, the first visit. Relatives who could visit only occasionally as he and his siblings grew up. Sarah Hekmati is his eldest sister. He always loved the idea of knowing his relatives, and as I'm sure many first-generation American-born children can relate, they don't grow up experiencing holidays in this country with relatives. Before he even left for Iran, he went to the Iranian authorities in Washington to get their approval. He did pass all the paperwork, interviews, everything. They knew what he did, uh, and they let him, they gave him visa. He passed custom in airport, be with family for two weeks, and after two weeks, uh, he vanished. Missing a big family celebration. How did you find out what had happened? My brother said uh, he didn't show up to the uh, party. And the next day, went to house. He was living with my other brother. His computer, his cell phone, and all the um, IDs. Um, wallet, everything was gone. A week later, a call from their son saying he was in prison. From August to December 2011, the family frantically searched. They made repeated trips to Tehran's notorious Evan prison and were told they could not see him. And we were given this promise that he was just being investigated because he was American and they were looking into the fact that he had served in the military for the U.S., but that he would be released. In fact, he was being held in solitary confinement, where he would stay for 16 months in a dark room. Then came the televised confession. I know it was forced, and I know it was, it was lie. I know it was, they forced him to say that. There was a secret trial. The Iranians produced Hekmati's military reservist card, employment agreements with defense contractors, unusual pocket litter for a spy, but evidence, they said, of his ties to the CIA. Hekmati was sentenced to death. It was sickening. I mean, we couldn't believe that it really got to this point. Months later, a new trial was ordered, and Benaz was able to visit. He was very bad shape. He was very bad. He was tiny, he was crying all the time. His face was uh, like a chalk, you know, it was white. And beard, long beard, no ha shape, hair was shaved. 
I was worried about him. We were, most of the time we were just crying. Me and him were crying. And he, he t from that day he told me, Mom, don't believe anything. I'm innocent. Ali, you haven't been well enough to be able to go to see him. No, I've been under uh, <clears throat> chemotherapy. I've had radiation treatment. Ali Hekmati has brain cancer. How are you feeling now? Uh, so, so. I'm just taking it one day at a time. Mostly emotionally, you know, it hurts him more than uh, yeah, emotionally. I'm uh, chemotherapy. It's just, he's under chemotherapy, but thinking about him, it's just... Uh, uh, every day is yeah. in my mind, every day. And every night. These are very powerful. You know, we, we had a lot of support. We had a great turnout for the event itself. The family has raised awareness and funds for lawyers and advisors with a photo shoot in a former prison. A stark reminder of the conditions Emir Hikmati faces. People realize when it comes to justice and uh, for a humanitarian cause that they really need to do something because it could be their son, their brother, and, and we felt that. This is a really powerful picture of your dad. He, you can see the, the, the pain. Sadness, the yeah. pain. Dozens of members of Congress have written letters of support to the family and letters to Iran. Who's that? Baba June. Sarah Hekmati and her husband Rami run the Free Amir website, tracking support and the number of days he has been held, 754 and counting. They do not know when or if or how their brother and son will be released, but they now see some hope in the election of Iran's new and more moderate president, Rouhani. We're hoping that the new president come come here, the United Nations, and he brings us some news. What would it mean for you, Ali, to be able to see him here again? Oh, that would be the whole world. Every day that I will have both of his hands in my hands, that I will be able to hug him and kiss him and tell him how much I love him and how much I miss him. I suffer a lot. It's too much every day. Every day. That when when he's when he's coming home, it's too much. We suffer a lot. So I just want to ask him to ask presidents and the new government to help him here to bring him home to his family. This man is a U.S. veteran, a Marine. Sheila, what is the U.S. government saying on his behalf? Well, the U.S. government, the State Department actually sent us a statement today on behalf of Secretary of State Kerry saying that they wanted the Iranians to release Amir Hakmati as soon as possible, but he was being held in detention on fabricated espionage charges. There's several specific things that the Americans want beyond, of course, simply his release from prison and his return to his family. They also want the Swiss embassy in Tehran, which looks after U.S. interests there because there are no diplomatic relations between Iran and the United States at this point, to have the right to go and visit him to assure his well-being. Of course, they want his release. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see what comes as we look into the U.N. session underway this week. Let's bring into the discussion.